Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace here, and today we are in main assembly, and we are going to program some bots. Uh, this assumes that you've already gone through the in-game tutorial, uh, and that you played around with main assembly a little bit, uh, but you want to find out how to do something a little bit beyond uh, the tutorial. I'm going to show you some examples of practical things that you can do. Uh, we'll start off with some simple things and then towards the end of the video we'll get a little bit more complicated though it won't get super complicated. So let's get into it. So let's start with something simple. This is the Tobe Mark III uh, by Drevlin and it features a white light. Uh, hitting F activates this which can destroy things and also flip the car over. Uh, and then C is toggling the camera back and forth. So I'm hitting that the C once, and then I hit it again, and it goes away. Uh, so let's look at the programming. Toggle. Let's show you. That is under state. Now, when you first come in here, uh, you're going to see the advanced mode is off. This is the default. You're going to want to turn that advanced mode on. Uh, state, toggle, and drag that over, and then you just connect these up. And then the camera, so first off, uh, when you're building, uh, you've got the camera is under electronics, and then when you go to program, this would be activate, and you would drag that over to here, uh, and then just hook it all up. So toggle is to go back and forth between uh, a state of on and a state of off. Lights are also under electronics, so after adding them to your vehicle, uh, you would see under electronics in the programming spotlight alpha, and you would drag over the red and the green and the blue uh, unless you only wanted a red light and then you would only need to drag over the red uh, and hook that up to a constant in this case we want a white light so that means we need full red green and blue in order to make a white light so if i wanted to make a purple light i could get rid of the green and just have full red and blue and you see we've got a purple light now and then the F is just rotating a hinge. Next up is the cart by Sam1222. I should say the toe by Drevlin uh, looked awesome and so does this cart uh, by Sam122. So let's see some of the features of this. So this has something interesting. Uh, it, it does have the camera uh, on the front. It also has a green light. But as you go forward, the green light goes off, and then if you go really fast, a red light comes on. And then if you go slow again, the red light goes off, and then if you slow down, now we have a green light. So that's kind of interesting. So let's see what's going on there. Uh, this is the area of the lights. So speedometer alpha, this is uh, actually something that was added in electronics. Um, so he dragged over the speed and then he's multiplying it by a constant 0 0.05 so this is a little hard to follow um let me reorganize this okay i've reorganized this so it's a little easier for me to follow uh, so there's a constant of light green to start then as your speed increases a multiple of the speed gets subtracted from the one and then the light green goes off and at the same time uh, this multiple of speed uh, increases and then the light red comes on so that's how that works the constant and subtract and the multiple are all within the math so you've got multiply uh, subtract uh, constant for the constant that would just be a number that you would type in here for the subtraction, the second input is subtracted from the first input. Next, we're going to look at the Tom Plane Mark 8 by Drevlin. Uh, so this thing has a couple of interesting features. First off, the wings uh, fold up, and I believe it's F to fold them down. Uh, the C is for toggling the camera view, and then there's this light that it's not just an on state, off state, but it's actually uh, gradually coming on and gradually going off. And then the other thing, 
something I want to actually fix is I'm pressing spacebar to get the uh, motor going, but I have to keep holding. Okay, that was that was fun. Uh, I have to keep holding the spacebar in order to keep the motor going. Uh, so I don't like that, and I'm going to fix that. So if we look at the programming, uh, first off, the thing I want to fix is the power. So spacebar. I'm going to drag this over a little bit and we're going to add a toggle to that and I'll do this and then this and now when I hit spacebar it's going to toggle the power on instead of me having to hold the spacebar constantly. Um, the red light is because of this wave so this is a sine wave um, and this has the light going on and off. So it, when it's up here, when the sine wave is up here, the red light is on, and when the sine wave is down here, the red light is off. Now I can uh, increase the period here, make the wave longer, and now you'll see that the light takes longer to come on and to go off. We can also skew this so that it stays on longer so if I do 0.75, it it's only off for a short time and it's on for a longer time. Actually, let's skew it even a little bit more. There we go. So now you can see that the light is staying on longer than it stays off. We can hit F and spacebar to toggle. And whoops, that's down. Let's go up. Yep. Okay, not so much. There we go. And now if I want, I can hit spacebar to toggle it off, and now I'm dropping, and now I can toggle it back on. So there you go. For tank steering, uh, here's my tank steering vehicle. Let's just drive it a little bit. So just using WASD. So if we look at the programming for this, I have to um, admit I don't quite understand all of this. Um, this is something that Khan showed off in his video, uh, but if you want to just take a pause on the video uh, as you wire this up, you got to subtract and add, a subtract and an add. The W and S are all going to the first um, input and the D and A are all going to the second input and then these two are going to power the alpha which I believe is the back and these are going to the beta motors which is in the front. So this is a garage that I made. Let's go ahead and build that and then hit enter. I come out away from it. Now I'm going to hit uh, B to build again tab bots and let's bring in this cart. Um, I think I'm going to bring that in. Okay, and then I point at this, hit enter. So now I'm going to go towards it. The door opens. Let me pause for a second. I'll go forward a little bit more. Uh, the door was supposed to close. Why didn't the door? There it goes. Okay, now the door closed. Now I want the door to open again so I can get out. Let me see if I can manage this. I have to pass in front of this sensor. There we go. The door is open. I'm going to pass the sensor again. And now the door closes behind me. Whew. Okay, it doesn't work perfect. Um, I don't think you're supposed to be building garages in this game. But let's go ahead and take a look at how this garage works. So I've got a proximity sensor here. So the sensors are under electronics sensors, and I'm using this proximity sensor. Um, and when you first have it uh, on, this is about maybe this length, and you can click on this and drag it over to make it as long or as short as you want. And then again, I've got another proximity sensor going out to here. So the programming is if we've got either of these sensors are triggered uh, it goes through an OR gate first OR is under logic you've got OR so if this OR this then send a signal this way 
we've got a hold here. So the hold, hold is under state. You can drag out a hold. And I'm telling it, if the incoming state is over 0.5, then hold for two seconds. So this is saying, if you get a signal, do a toggle, and then basically wait two seconds before you do another toggle. So the other thing here are these lights. This isn't really part of showing the garage off. It's uh, part of showing off the CPU. See, I've got a CPU right above me. So this is the uh, programming for the controller, which is sending a constant value of one to one of the lamps. Uh, it's sending a light red to, I believe that's the lower lamp. And then it's sending an output of value one. Uh, so let's show you, that's under input output. So you drag over an output and then you can name the output and you give it a name. And I, so I named it value one. And then we'll take a look at the CPU, uh, E programming. And now I'm pulling from value one to the, going to the light green. And, and on the uh, controller, we had one going into value one, and now I'm pulling that uh, value out and going to the light green. So this is how you can transfer a value from one CPU to another CPU. Uh, this is, you can't just name an input. I thought that you could just pull over an input and rename it, but that doesn't work. What you have to do is under electronics, uh, after you've named an output, docking station alpha, you've got this. So this doesn't show up until you create an output. So now I can drag that over and use that to feed into the light green. Next I wanted to show you this vehicle which is gradual acceleration. Uh, so let me just print this and I'm going to hit W once and you can see it continues driving even though I'm not hitting W anymore and I can hit W again and it goes a little faster, W again, it goes a little faster. Um, I can hold W and it'll go fast. I'm going to hit space to brake. Now I'm going to hit S once, just tap it and I'm continuing to go backwards. I'll hit S again, S again, S again. Uh, and I'm not holding S down, but I'm continuing to move. I can hit the brakes. So let's look at the programming for this. Uh, so normally you would just have W and S going to the power, but in this case I'm using this sum. Uh, and what the sum does is it holds a value and keeps accumulating a value uh, until you reset this to zero. Applying the brakes resets it to zero. The, this uh, second input is the reset. So ignore this just for a minute. I'm going to rewire this like so. Uh, so what this would do, every time I hit W it puts a 1 in here. And then if I hit W again, now this will be 2. If I hit W again, now this will be 3. Uh, and so I'm increasing the power going to the motors. If I hit spacebar, that's going to reset this to zero. Uh, with the multiple, so I'll re rewire that. Now I'm multiplying by 0.5. So instead of increasing this by one, I'm increasing it by 0.5. Uh, if I hit W again, I increase it to one. If I hit W again, I increase it to 1.5. So that's how that works and you can change the multiple so I could change this to 0.25 and then it would increase even more gradually. Now this is obviously not a car, it's just an example. Uh, I'm going to be showing you examples of AND, NOT, and a delay. Uh, so AND is a piece of logic that's found here. Uh, NOT is also in the logic and the delay is a state here. Uh, so the AND says if one thing is true and the other thing is true, both of them have to be true in order for an output to be true. So if either of these are false, then there will be no output. So that's these three lights right in front. The uh, first one right in front is this, the red, 
The third in front is this one, which is blue. And the middle one is the one that's going to be light up if both of those are on. So I'll turn that on and you see that middle one lights up now. And if I turn off the blue one, now the middle one goes off. So both the red and the blue have to be on in order for that purple one to come on. So that's how the AND works. So the second one I want to show you is the NOT. The NOT has an outcome of a 0 or a 1 coming out of it. If a 1 comes into the NOT, then 0 will come out. If a 0 comes into the NOT, then a 1 will come out. So I'm going to toggle um, one of the lights and the other light is going to toggle on and off the reverse of the first light. So that's these ones right in front. Right now the first light is off and so the second light is on and if I hit the first light on the second light goes off and I can toggle those back and forth. The last thing I want to show you is delay. Uh, a signal comes into the delay and then it waits a certain period of time and then the signal comes out of the delay. So in this case I'm going to have an input, you'll see this light come on, then you'll wait two seconds and then the second light will come on. So those are the ones here in the back, if I just briefly tap this, you'll see that one come on and then the second one comes on a couple of seconds later. I can hold the first light on for a little bit and then you see the second light comes on and holds. So that is how the delay works. So the last thing I'm going to show you is this bot, which is an AI. I'm not going to go into all the detail of how this works, but I'm just going to hit control and that's going to start the bot. It's going to approach the wall, hit, hit the brakes when it gets to the wall. It backs up and turns and then it continues forward. And I'm not hitting any buttons right now. This is uh, doing this all on its own. All I've done is turn it on. Oops. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. So it puts on the brakes, backs up, and goes forward. And I'm going to have this, I have this on the workshop if you want to download it. It's a AI car or something like that. This is the programming. Um, I think I'm going to wait though because this video is uh, getting kind of long. And I can explain how all this works in another video. But you can see there's nothing new here. I've got toggle, multiply, add, not, uh, or, delay, hold. But if you want to take a look at it in more detail, you can download this bot from the workshop. And I called it Basic AI Obstacle Avoidance. So before we wrap up, I just wanted to say that I also do programming in a couple of other vehicle building games, Scrap Mechanic and GameCraft. Um, GameCraft is going to be coming out with some logic stuff and math stuff pretty soon, so I'm excited about that. But in Scrap Mechanic, I've built a couple of different kinds of pattern makers, a, a Spirograph machine, um, a Mandelbrot set. So you might want to check out the rest of my channel. If you like this video, please like it. Consider subscribing to my channel and ring that bell so you get notifications. For the comments section, please post any suggestions about what I could cover next in uh, programming in main assembly. And also, if you saw something that uh, I didn't do correctly in the programming or I, it could be done more efficiently, please let me know. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.